Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72. This segment today is called Wicked Wednesday. If you didn't know, Wednesday is the new release for new comics that come out every week. These are my recommendations for the best books to pick up on Wednesday. I will also name one book to be the speculation pick of the week. Comic publishers across the board are experiencing record high sales, and that's just great news to hear. First up, DC is giving us Suicide Squad War Crime Special Number 1. This is John Austin returning to his baby, The Suicide Squad, which he created the modern version of in 1987. In this story, they must extract a high-ranking American politician who is about to be charged with war crimes in Europe. He knows too many dark, terrible secrets about American policy, so they must go rescue him. Next up is Harley Quinn and her Gang of Harleys Number 5 of a six-part mini series. There's going to be a Harley Quinn solo movie. You don't know what characters they're going to use or which plot lines, so you might want to follow this series because it may have some characters that may be used in future movies. Next up is DC's Bombshells Annual Number 1. This is worth buying because of the cover. Terry Dotson really knows how to draw the female figure. Overall, it's a slow week for comics at DC. However, they're making up for it with action figures. For example, the Batman Arkham Knight Harley Quinn action figure, which stands about 6.6 .6 inches tall, it retails for about $28. There's also the black and white statue of Batman by Raphael Albuquerque. There's limited to 5,200 pieces. It's selling for about 80 bucks. You didn't think I talked about toys in this channel, did you? I dabble a little bit. Next up, let's see what Marvel is up to. And that's going to be The Amazing Spider-Man number 17. And Electro is back in the traditional outfit, but this time Electro is a chick. And not only is Electro a woman, she's shocking the Prowler. And I don't see where this is going, so I got to pick this up. The Electro character made his first appearance back in Amazing Spider-Man number 9 back in 1964, as shown here. Next up is Deadpool vs. Gambit number 4 of a five-part miniseries. It tells stories of the secret relationship in the past of Remy and Wade doing some major thievery. Next up is Hyperion number 6. Let me make this clear, I am not recommending this, it just has a cool cover. But even with the cool cover, he's just a Superman clone. Just look at that, come on. Seriously, there's a lot of Superman ripoffs, but Hyperion is one of the biggest ripoffs. He doesn't deserve his own title. Stop it, Marvel. On the flip side, a character that does deserve his own title and has deserved it for many, many years is Han Solo. This is issue number three, and it looks outstanding. Han is the original Space Bandit, and he's the inspiration for characters like Star-Lord. Don't think, just pick it up. Next up is Spider-Gwen number 11. It's been confirmed that this character is going to make an appearance in the animated series with Spider-Man. This issue seems to mimic issue number 50 of Spider-Man No More type of thing, so I would be paying attention to it. They're still fleshing out the character's backstory and motivations, which will prove important later. Next up is X-Men 92 number 6. This is the comic that's inspired by the early 1990s X-Men cartoon that's so popular. It mimics the tone and the art style of that period, so if you have nostalgia and you want the old X-Men back, then pick this up. Now I'd like to offer my apology. Last week I did not recommend Venom Space Knight number 11, and as you probably already knew, it's completely blown up crazy. Well, at least the 1 in 25 variant has gotten expensive. It peaked at about $125, it came down to about $60, and now it's rising again right around about 100 bucks. I'm very conservative when it comes to variants, and there's no way in hell I would be spending this type of money for it, especially when the regular cover is still selling for cover price. If a book is really valuable, not only will the variant go up in value, but the regular cover will as well. If you pay $100 for this 125 variant, I'm going to slap you myself. But yes, do go out and find the regular cover at cover price. It's going to be a good long-term play. The Venom character is Spider-Man's arch enemy surpassing the Green Goblin. So anytime they fight, you want to get that. So my bad for not mentioning it last week. Next up is our report on independent comics and small publishers. First up is XO Man of War number 49. Issue 50 is going to be the final issue of XO and not because of bad sales. That's just the way Valiant does things. When something comes to a natural halt, they just go ahead and kill it off instead of drag it on forever. EXO was sort of like if Thor had Iron Man's armor and that armor was alive like Venom. Next up and also from Valiant is 4001 AD number four. At this point, if you've already missed it, you should just go ahead and get the trade paperback, I guess, because it's not gonna make sense if you pick up issue number four only. This is some of the best science fiction you're gonna read in comics and novels anywhere by Matt Kent, the same writer from the Divinity miniseries. 
Up next and also from Valiant is Bloodshot number 16. The Bloodshot Island story arc seems to incorporate elements of the Running Man meets the Hunger Games. If you're not following Bloodshot monthly, you are missing a real treat. It's a real thriller. Next up from Dark Horse Comics is May number 4. This comic has failed to catch on with a mass audience, but it's actually pretty good. A young woman who's in a fantasy world for years fighting monsters and dragons comes back to the real world and those monsters and dragons follow her here. It's a very good read, it's overlooked. Next up from IDW Comics is Jim Thompson's Killer Inside Me number one. This is the story of a man who's pretending to be a slow-witted deputy sheriff in a small town in Texas, but he's actually a serial killer and people don't know it. This is number one of a five-part miniseries. Next up from Heavy Metal is Reincarnate number one. This is the story of a private detective that gets shot in the head, but instead of dying, he gains the power to meet and interact with past versions of himself. I'm like the premise. I'm curious to see how they handle the material. Next up is the Speculation Pick of the Week. And that's going to be Equilibrium number one from American Mythology Productions. This is about a dystopian future in which the Third World War broke out and to prevent a fourth, the ability to feel is outlawed and emotion is punished and a rebellion breaks out against these fascist laws. Equilibrium is not new. It was actually a 2002 film and was a flop at the box office. And the lead star was who? Christian Bale. After the American Psycho and before he was Batman, Christian Bale starred in this cult classic. The movie is actually pretty good. It just came out at the wrong time. So I would advise you to pick up the comic and go back and watch the movie. Up next is another strong week from Image Comics who always deliver. First up is Eden's Fall number one. This is the story of an FBI agent who follows a sociopath on the off the grid town of Eden, Wyoming. Next up is East to West number 29. This is Jonathan Hickman on fire writing this. It's biblical four horsemen theology meets westerns. And Hickman's one of the few people alive that can pull this off and make it interesting. You should get a trade paperback of this to catch up on what's going on. Next up is Lazarus number 24, one of the most underrated comic series out there. If you love dystopian future stories, then this is for you, especially if you like The Hunger Games. Next up is Saga number 37, and this is a comic that deserves all the praise and all the awards it ever got. It's probably got the best writer in comics in Brian K. Vaughn and one of the top five artists in Fiona Staples. And with foul a whole bunch of hype and gimmicks every week and crazy variants, it just puts out its book every month and it's fantastic. And this is what comics is all about. Conceptually, think of Saga as Star Wars meets Romeo and Juliet. And last but not least is Tokyo Ghost number 10. This takes place 80 years in the future where humanity is addicted to technology and Japan of all places is the only place that's tech free. This is influenced by the Blade Runner and Total Recall all day, which is a good thing. Once again, get a trade paperback to catch up with what's going on. That's about it for today. Thank you for watching Wicked Wednesday where I review all the new comic books for a new comic day. Be sure to follow my blog at comicpower.net. On social media, follow me at facebook.com forward slash comicpower.net and comicpower-universe.tumblr.com. And don't forget twitter.com forward slash comicpowersub. I also sell comics on eBay at this link. This is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying bye bye. share this video, click on subscribe, give it a thumbs up and tell everyone you know about this channel to help it grow. Thank you for your support.